to be 
However, this wasn't Lorene's mother, and the two friends, Lorene and her friend, who I couldn't find the name, but the friend who was the same age as Lorene, they continued drinking wine at around 1.15 a.m. Judith arrived home accompanied by her boyfriend, and the first thing that they noticed is that the house was completely dark, and once they got inside, they noticed that all the light bulbs in the house were untwisted, so all three floors were completely dark, pitch black. Judith's boyfriend noticed that the back door on the third floor was open, but he didn't say anything, and he didn't really think anything of it at that time. When Judith looked in Lorene's room, she saw that Lorene is sleeping in her room, so she felt relieved, and she closed the door and went back to sleep in her own bedroom. However, Judith found it so unsettling that the whole apartment building was pitch black when they got there. All the light bulbs and hallways were taken out, and so she couldn't sleep because of that. And then her boyfriend told her that he saw that the back door was open. Judith was already feeling unsettled because of all the light bulbs that were twisted out on all the three floors and so she didn't know what to think about that she decided to wake Lorreen up at three o'clock in the morning and ask her if she knows anything about this but this is when she found out that the girl in the bed is not Lorreen it was actually her friend that was in bed as it turns out when Lorene and her friend were drinking wine together, they passed out in Lorene's bed. But then, Lorene suddenly got her pillow and decided to go sleep on the couch. And she didn't explain why she did that to her friend. Lorene's friends said that they were both really intoxicated when this happened, so she doesn't remember much. Lorene's mom found Lorene's brand new sneakers left at home and these stickers were given to her by Judith on her birthday that was a few weeks prior to that so she loved those sneakers and she wouldn't walk out without them they were her favorite sneakers other than that there was nothing out of ordinary so Her mom didn't know what to think, so this is when Judith came outside and decided to search for her daughter herself in the neighborhood with her boyfriend at around 3 o'clock in the morning. At around 3.45 a.m., Judith and her boyfriend saw a police car driving by, so they flagged it down to stop the police car and to report Lorene missing. So, of course, police assumed right away that Lorreen ran away willingly because she often mentioned that she wanted to run away and even her mom knew that she wanted to run away. Her friends would all say that she would tell them that she wanted to run away. So, for several weeks, police did nothing. They did nothing and assumed that Lorreen will return eventually. However, when Lorreen never returned, police modified their theory. So they said that she must
plus she had a horse that she loved dearly so she would never leave her horse unattended. Some witnesses came forward and they said that they've seen Rachel the day of her disappearance talking to three men. Police was actually able to track down those three men and found out that they had criminal past. However, police could not find any connection of them doing anything to Rachel or killing her. But one man actually eventually confessed to her murder, one of these men. The man even gave location of where the body is, but police could not find the body. So since no evidence was ever recovered, no body was ever found, the men were let go. They were never charged for this. Another case that was very similar to Lorene's was Shirley and McBride. Shirley was also 15 years old and she disappeared on July 13th, 1984. She disappeared at around 9.30 p.m. after leaving her sister's apartment. This happened in Concord, New Hampshire. Shirley was actually planning to go walk over to a friend's house who borrowed money from her and was gonna give it back to her. So she was gonna get this money and head on over to her boyfriend's place where she planned to spend the night. It actually took several days for her family to report her missing because the family said that they didn't really worry too much because she ran away a lot from her house and they thought it was one of those episodes that she will be back but when they found out that she never made it to her boyfriend's house they started to panic police of course categorized her as a runaway as well but of course her family knew that this was not the case Police questioned her boyfriend at one point, but eventually they ruled him out as a suspect. Shirley never was found and unfortunately in 1996 her family declared her dead because they could not get any new information about Shirley's whereabouts. And another case is of Denise Ann Denault, who was a little bit different. She was 25 years old and had two children at the time of her disappearance. However, she lived two blocks away from Lorene's apartment and she went missing on June 8th, 1980, which was just a few months after Lorene's disappearance. After attending a private social club that night, she decided to walk to a party at around 1.30 a.m. So she told people at the social club that she will be at this other party. But she never made it to the party or home or anywhere. Another reason why investigators started assuming that maybe the disappearance was connected to Lorene is because they looked a lot alike with Lorene. The same features and everything and when police started looking into Denise's case they found out that Denise actually lived next door to a person named Bob Evans and this person actually later turned out to be Terry Peter Rasmussen who was suspected to be a serial killer and he was actually suspected of killing four women around the same time in a drum and dumping their bodies near Bear Brook State Park in New Hampshire. So Laureen and Denise were suspected to be victims of this guy. However, Denise's body was also never found. Judith stopped the investigation, so no further action was taken. And to the 
for watching.